All right, so again, my name is James Frasca. I am a video production specialist here at Video Guys. If you are watching this and you have any questions throughout the show, feel free to give us a call at 800-323-2325. My extension is 1111, and I would be more than happy to explain anything in further detail. So like I said, super basic. What is a PTZ camera? Well, PTZ stands for pan, tilt, and zoom. Pan, left and right, tilt, up and down, and then of course, zoom. It's a robotic camera controlled by a remote operator, which we'll do a little bit of a demo later showing you how easy it is to uh, connect the cameras together and then be able to control them from a controller, multiple cameras from a controller. If you want any more information on any of the PTZ cameras that you see here, or the ones that we are going to talk about later, make sure to check out our website, videoguys.com, look in the collections page, and we have a PTZ page full of all of our PTZs. So what are some of the advantages of using a PTZ over a manned, say, studio camera or handy cam? Well, first of all, they can be uh, mounted out of sight. So out of sight, out of mind. Uh, if you have a house of worship or an education department and you don't want to be distracting to your students or your audience members, well, a PTZ is perfect because you can mount it on a wall, mount it on a ceiling, mount it on a tripod. It'll be out of sight, out of mind, and not distracting to those that are going to be uh, in attendance. Another great thing is that you can install them where you see most fit and then be able to, after the fact, pan, tilt, and zoom to get the camera in a position that you like. And a single operator control can control multiple cameras. So I will kind of show that real quick here. Uh, I have a bird dog controller right here, and I have three cameras right here that are all connected to this controller via NDI. And if I hit camera three, you will notice that that new tech PTZ3 camera is starting to move and I can go up, I can go down, I can zoom in. And with just the click of two buttons to camera, now I'm controlling that middle camera there, which is a PTZ Optics NDI camera. And as you can see, we're also getting the video feed from that camera. Now, if I was a little bit better at this, I could do this much smoother. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, I'm not super good at it. And then lastly, we have a bird dog P200 there as well. And as you can see, I can pan and tilt and zoom with that camera, all from one controller, one person operating and controlling multiple cameras. <laughs> Installation is super easy as, as well. One, two, three, four. You're gonna find your mounting location, make sure that it has the proper mounting and, and hardware, whether it's a, a tripod or a wall mount or a ceiling mount or even a pole mount. Those are options for uh, indoor cameras and outdoor cameras. You're gonna provide, cam uh, excuse me, you're gonna provide power to that camera, whether it's going to be the DC adapter that is included with the camera or NDI, which we will talk about a little bit later. You're gonna feed your video into your production system, whether it's a switcher or an encoder, whatever it is, uh, you're gonna decide whether it's going to be USB, HDMI, SDI, or ND excuse me, NDI. And then you're gonna provide control to that camera, which we'll also talk about. There's several ways you can do that with an IR remote, a controller like that, or even a software program on your uh, production system. So here are some installation tips when it comes to installing your cameras. Now, the biggest thing that we can advise is when you are mounting a camera in a house of worship, try to avoid using a balcony. When people are you know, getting into the music and the hymns, they may you know, start jumping up and down and clapping to the rhythm of the music, and that is going to shake the balcony, and in doing so, make the camera shake. Now, there are some ways that you can combat that, but you want to minimize it from the get-go. So if you can mount it on the wall next to it, uh, next to the balcony, or even on the ceiling, you know, another couple feet isn't going to hurt. Next, you're going to want to consider your lighting. Now, a lot of these cameras are, in good, are, are good in low light, but at the end of the day, if it is pitch black in your, you know, education room, your house of worship, your corporate office, 
there's only so much that a low light camera can do. Also try avoiding shooting in front of uh, um, a window or something that is very, very, very bright because then your exposure is going to be improper and blown out and it's just not gonna look great. And then lastly, kind of like what we were saying last week, if you watch, test in the same environment as the event. You wanna make sure that all of the variables are gonna be exactly the same when you're doing your testing compared to when you're doing your actual event, whether it's gonna be recorded or streamed live. Now we had touched upon this earlier. There are two ways to power most PTZ cameras. You can either power them with the included uh, DC power cable, or you can power it with NDI with something called POE, which stands for Power Over Ethernet. Now, there are three flavors of POE. PoE, PoE+, Plus, and PoE++. Plus Plus. And basically what those uh, designations determine is the amount of power required in order to have the camera function. So PoE is about 15 and a half watts per camera, or per device, I should say. PoE Plus is 30 watts, and PoE++ Plus Plus is 60 to 100 watts. Now, when you factor all of that into you know, your workflow, that's, you're going to compare that to what a network switch's total power delivery is. And that is the maximum amount of power a switch can deliver to devices on your network. So a, and that's not necessarily per port, it is per, you know, the maximum overall power a switch can deliver. So if a switch has 60 watts of total power delivery available, then you can only have two PoE Plus devices on that switch because each device is 30 watts if they're PoE Plus. Now, I did just want to mention real quick that even if you run out of power from your switch, if you have excess ports, you can still have a device communicate to the other devices on that network switch. And as a matter of fact, if, I, if we show the, um, excuse me, our bird dog controller here, we have it connected to our network but we also have it being provided its own power. So it's not drawing power from our, from our network switch. Just to show that you don't necessarily need to have a device be powered by the switch. It can communicate even if it has its own power. Now, which PTZ cable or video connection is right for you? Now, there are three major uh, connections that most people use. And the first is going to be an HDMI cable. Now this is going to be your, your standard cable that any TV or computer has plugged into it. And everybody has an HDMI cable. It's standard household video transfer cable. And the good thing about it is it's high speed, high resolution, and it's built specifically for video. Now keep in mind, it does not do control and it does not do power, but it does do video and it does video very well. The downsides of an HDMI cable are having limited uh, distances that you can travel with it. Once you get to about 25 or 50 feet, you're gonna start losing quality as the cable gets longer and longer. So you wanna avoid using HDMI over long distances. I'm just gonna to toss that on the floor. <clears throat> Next is going to be SDI. Now SDI is basically the industry standard when it comes to uh, video cabling, SDI is excellent for long runs. You can go well over 200 feet when you're running an SDI cable. And the great thing about the SDI cables are, if you look closely, it has what's called a B and C locking mechanism on it. So you plug this into your camera or you plug this into your monitor and it locks into place. So if somebody you know gives a, a slight tug on it, you're not gonna lose your feed. Uh, so these are great for running long distances and being able to lock into your camera, but again, only does video. This will not transmit power, will not transmit uh, control, only video. And the other thing is you, if you are planning on running this, you have to run a lot of cable that only does one thing. All right, and toss that on the floor too. Lastly is a standard NDI cable, which is actually just the standard CAT6 cable. Um, any old Ethernet cable will work, CAT6, CAT6A, CAT5E, 
although we recommend using a CAT6. Now the great thing about the CAT6 cable is that it does everything. You can run this very long lengths. Uh, you can run it up to 100 meters before you start needing to use things like extenders or anything like that. And you can get power, control, and video all from this one cable to any device that is connected to it. So like we were able to control all three of these cameras with each camera only needing one cable uh, to be able to control that. And as you saw with the PTZ optics camera, we had the video feed coming through, again, all through one cable. Makes it very, 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 very convenient. Speaking of the controller, there are a couple different ways that you can control your cameras. If we look at this Canon camera here, I have an IR remote. I'll put this over here so you can kind of see it. <laughs> Is that right? And now this remote will control that Canon camera. I can pan, I can tilt, and I can, I'm not super familiar with these, but I can zoom, there you go. And I can zoom out with it. Now, keep in mind, this comes with most cameras, come with an IR remote. However, they are line of sight only. So you have to be able to see the camera. Think of it more as a TV remote um, compared to a controller like this with a joystick. So they are good in a pinch, but not, not really good for, you know, if you're going to be streaming live and using uh, and planning on, you know, moving your camera while live. It will be a little bit more jittery, although you can set presets, which is a nice feature. Next is you can use Serial RS422, which is a way to daisy chain your cameras together and then into something like a bird dog switch or a PTC Optics uh, Super Joy. And in doing so, you can control your cameras, um, but it is one cable that all it does is uh, control. There's Visca over IP, which is a CAT6 cable, and then there's control over NDI, which is what we used in our demo just a few minutes ago. Um, one cable into our network switch, one cable into each of the cameras. We're able to get video, power, and control all from one cable which makes this super, super easy for cable management. <clears throat> Next is, we were talking about this with the, uh, you know, the PoE, PoE+, plus, PoE++. Plus plus. Well, here's a network switch is what makes all of those devices communicate to each other and power each other. And I do want to give a shout out, whenever we have um, a tech tip, we always have to mention the N M4250, line of Netgear uh, video switches uh, is our number one tech tip uh, when it comes to NDI workflows. Um, we do have desktop models, we have rack mountable models, like this is a rack mountable, rack mountable model that you can put into a rack system. We have desktop models and uh, they start right around $600 and go up from there when you know being able to add more ports being able to add more uh, sfp ports and even more total power delivery so without further ado we do have a little video on the netgear switches that i would like to play real quick so we're going to play that and we'll see you in a minute Introducing the all-new Netgear M4250 Series AV Line Switches, engineered and designed from the ground up to exceed the increasing demands of AV professionals. Featuring all ports on the back with status lights on the front and a range of sizes. Starting as low as 8 ports and a variety of PoE options for up to 90 watts per port, the M4250 Series supports any 1 gigabit AV over IP deployment. Pre-configured for out-of-the-box functionality, these switches can be up and running with little to no configuration. When more configuration is required, a dedicated web-based GUI specifically created for AV professionals is available. Software-controlled fan adjustments enable the fans to be turned off when ambient temperature and PoE loads are appropriate for a totally fanless and acoustic-friendly operation. Mounting flexibility is crucial. Along with reverse rack mounting, threaded holes on the chassis allow for universal mounting options outside the rack as well. The new Netgear M4250 series AV line switches are here. So that's a little overview on the Net Netgear M4250 switches. If you have any questions about anything that we've gone over, like I said, this is just a, a quick overview. If you have any questions about any of this, I'd be more than happy to get on a phone call with you. 800-323-2325.
and you can reach me directly at my extension 1111 and we can talk about all of this stuff and how they will fit into a workflow for you. Uh, so moving on, we're going to talk about some of the different camera brands that we offer. And again, this is just going to be a quick overview. And if you have any questions, give us a call. So we're going to start out with Bird Dog. Now, Bird Dog has a ton of different cameras that are available and they have entry level all the way up to studio, you know, high quality production cameras, starting off with their Bird Dog P100 all the way up to the Bird Dog P4K. And I did just want to give a shout out to Bird Dog because they did just about a month and a half ago release three new cameras, the Bird Dog P110, P120, and P240. And specifically that P240 is very exciting because that has a 40 times optical zoom. So if you really need to be able to zoom in a great distance, that's a great camera to look at. And I know there's a lot of cameras on the screen right here right now. So if you have any questions about any of them, give us a call. Be more than happy to explain the differences between all of them. Next is Canon. We just took on Canon not too long ago. So we wanted to give uh, some love to Canon with the CRN300, the CRN500, and the CRN700. Uh, we actually have the CRN300 right here. Great little camera. And everybody knows Canon sensors and Canon lenses. Well, here it is in a camera with the added benefit of all of the PTZ functionality. Amazing cameras, and we're so excited to be working with Canon. Next is NewTek. NewTek primarily makes turnkey production systems, such as the TriCaster, but they also do sell cameras, uh, offer cameras, such as the PTZ3 and the PTZ3 UHD. Now, the great thing about NewTek making cameras is they really are taking full advantage of NDI. And what I mean by that is we just did a whole month long show on NDI. But long story short, New Tech are the creators of NDI. They know it the best. And uh, they make these cameras that are the first cameras that are NDI HX3 compatible, which is really cool. Again, long story short, Full NDI is high, high quality, low latency, high bandwidth. So they are going to have amazing picture quality with low latency, but it's going to take up the most bandwidth on your network. So not too long ago, and uh, New Tech made NDI HX, which is low latency, a little bit lower quality, but significantly less bandwidth requirement, allowing you to add more devices to your network without bogging your network down. And, you know, like I just said, it is a little bit less, uh, a little bit more latency and a little bit of uh, quality reduction. So New Tech made NDI HX3, which brings that quality back up while also maintaining that low bandwidth. And these are the first cameras that are NDI HX3 compatible. So if you are looking for a camera that puts out a great quality, but doesn't take up too much bandwidth, definitely check out the PTZ3 and the PTZ3 UHD. Next is Panasonic. Panasonic, very similar to Bird Dog, has a camera for every single workflow that you can think of, whether or not you need SRT, uh, NDI, do you need HDMI, SDI, USB, do you need uh, 4K, what kind of zoom length do you need? Tons of different cameras for every single workflow. I'm going to swap to the next slide while it's still full screen. This is a chart of all of the new cameras that Panasonic has offered. We're not going to go into too much detail on these again. If you have any questions on any of the cameras that you see here, definitely give us a call 800-323-2325. You can contact me directly at extension 1111. Again, we would be more than happy to walk you through all the differences of these cameras. PTZ Optics has actually made it really easy to figure out which camera is best for you. Do you need USB, SDI, or NDI? And then ask yourself, what kind of zoom do you need? 12x, 20x, or 30x? And the great thing is, while supplies last, all of the PTZ cameras uh, that you see on the screen here are available for a rebate. The USB and SDI models are available with a $100 rebate 
and the NDI models are available with the $300 rebate. <clears throat> and since we're talking about PTZ Optics, I wanted to mention that they have two new cameras coming out, the Move 4K and the Studio Pro. Now the Move 4K is a PTZ camera, definitely fits in this show. The Studio Pro is a box camera, so it doesn't do any panning, tilting, or zoom, but because we're talking about new cameras from BTZ Optics, we wanted to throw it in there as well. Keep an eye out for those. I am being told by our inventory department we are expecting to have these in mid-January, early to mid-January. RGB Link is really good for an entry-level um, PTZ camera, and if you look at the PTZ view, you will see that that is not an NDI camera, which is why it is a little bit cheaper than all of the other cameras that you've seen here. However, just because it's not an NDI camera doesn't mean that you can't control it. You can still take the video out of the HDMI, SDI, or USB. You can control it where it's RS-232 or the IR remote and presets. Now, if you do want an RGB link camera that has NDI, they do have the PTZ NDI 20X camera, which has a lot of the same functionality as the view, but adds in that NDI capability. That was a lot of cameras that we just talked about, you know, about 30 different cameras that we just listed and gave a very brief overview. Again, I'm gonna say it one more time. If you have any questions on any of those cameras, give us a call 800-323-2325 and we can talk and figure out which camera is right for you. Last thing that I wanted to touch upon is auto tracking. Now you have your cameras, you have your mounting position, you know what zoomy length you want, you know what your switcher is, your encoder is. Do you wanna have auto tracking and what is auto tracking? And quite simply, auto tracking is the ability to have a camera automatically track somebody's movement without needing a person to control the camera such as the uh, bird dog controller. Now there are different ways that you can use auto tracking. Huddle cam, simple track light, and huddle cam, simple track are cameras that come with uh, auto tracking built in. Bird dog cameras, every single bird dog camera comes with cam control 3.0, which includes a free auto tracking uh, software. And PTC Optics moved that brand new camera that we just talked about, which is coming out, uh, which will be shipping next month, will be coming with uh, auto tracking. And then Panasonic PTZ cameras also come with auto tracking. And speaking of Panasonic, Panasonic's auto tracking is a little bit better than everybody else's. And we just wanted to say that if you need a little bit more advanced auto tracking, definitely check out the Panasonic software. And if you need even more advanced auto tracking, we highly recommend that you look at MRMC's Polymotion Chat Pro. And I could talk about why Panasonic, uh, excuse me, MRMC's Polymotion Chat Pro is the end all be all when it comes to auto tracking, but we're gonna have Sasha from MRMC demonstrate it in this video here. So this is our interface designed to be easy to use. So at the moment we have the, this PTZ head being controlled and a green tracking indicator underneath it showing that tracking is activated. So you can see that I'm being tracked here and you may have noticed this already from earlier, but you know, my body is being overlaid with the, with the skeletal overlay and the yellow dots showing you that the computer vision engine is aware of where I am as a person. It doesn't require my face. And even if I'm moving slightly, you don't want the camera to move. We can actually increase the zones where no motion will occur. So let's do that. Yeah, there you go. That's getting slightly bigger and maybe slightly taller. And then only when I move out of that larger circle, will it try to reposition me into that inner circle or that inner static zone. So if I move here, for example, now it will come and just really gently get me into that. So there you go. That is a really introductory crash course into all things PTZ cameras. Uh, I hope you learned something today. And if you have any questions about anything that we went over today and you want to talk in more depth about anything, I would be more than happy to. Definitely give us a call at 800-323-2325. My extension is 1111. Um, if you have any other questions, you can also email us at sales at video guys. Uh, you can message us on our website. 
and you can also comment on you know this youtube video or the facebook video and hey while you're there why don't you hit the subscribe button make sure to check us out uh, every week we do these shows uh, to inform you on the new and cool stuff coming out in the broadcasting world and uh, we're here every tuesday at 3 p.m eastern uh, gary will be back next week so we're super excited to have gary back next week and without further ado that that's all I have. So thank you for joining us today and uh, we'll see you next week. Peace. Video Guys is available Monday through Friday. Give us a call at 1-800-323-2325. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Instagram to stay connected with all of our updates. And you can like us on Facebook. Keep an eye out for our live videos and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.